Up to this point, we've been discussing a little bit about how um, we'll be looking at making this particular design. If you've been saving along with us, um, we are at the stage where we've set out our type rulers and we've got all of our rulers and guides in place and those guides are set up for uh, a prime optimization of a 1024 by 768 um, fixed pixel design and that design is going to look something like this we're going to slice these elements up we're going to bring them inside of Dreamweaver and assemble ourselves a nice working website um, Another thing that I do want to talk about before we get to um, discussing our design, because that's part and parcel of what we're trying to do here, is take the design skills and fundamentals we learned in our articles and apply them here in this simple yet effective uh, type layout. So one of the things about this particular design that you may or may not notice is the color scheme. And this color scheme uh, is decidedly different than the one that I just had open recently. Uh, let me just open that for you again. And as you can see, the background color is white. It's just the default uh, color that we had going. Um, so where did these other colors come from? Just pick them off the top of your head. Well, some of us um, can, in fact, uh, look at colors and pick out colors effectively. But if you are very new to this and you're not really accustomed to working with color schemes, uh, one of the things I can suggest to you to do is to go to a website called adobe.cooler or cooler.adobe, excuse me. And the one thing, um, some people will pronounce it color, uh, K-U-L-E-R. Let's just switch over to Firefox for a second. And in Firefox, here I am at the K-U-L-E-R uh, color or cooler website. Um, and as you can see, if you wish to get in here, well, quite literally, just a Google search uh, for K-U-L-E-R uh, is fine. But if you put in the address, it's K-U-L-E-R.adobe.com. So this is a small little application that's put together by the people at Adobe. And what's nice about this is that it's not just merely a, a receptacle for uh, different color schemes. As you can see here, there's a few um, that are being showcased and some of them, as actually all of them, have names. And if you look over, there's a star rating system. People like them, most popular. And as you can see here, you can browse through all kinds of different color schemes and as they call them here, themes. You can look at the most recent ones, um, you can look at the most popular ones, most downloaded. Yes, that's correct. Um, what you can do inside of this environment is to actually be able to download and use these different schemes. So for example, if you did like this Seawolf scheme, which is a very nice color scheme, you could um, download it, but in order to do so, you would need to sign in with your Adobe website um, address, or you would be able to uh, register. So if you don't have an Adobe ID, you can register here to get one. And if you do have one, uh, an Adobe ID, you can just go into this and sign in. Now when you do sign in, you'll see that there are more options available to you. And I'll do that in a second just to show you what I mean. But even if you're not signed in, here's something that you can um, do with this particular uh, application. Let's take a look. If we click on this button, we'll be able to view this color scheme inside of this window that we have here. Now, as you'll notice, each of the colors are represented down here by slider bars. And right now, they're all selected to have RGB color. And the RGB colors are great because those are colors that we'll use um, specifically with any computer screen or monitor. But notice that there's also hexadecimal colors. And hexadecimal values are quite literally just the same value as any RGB value or hue, saturation, and value. Um, or CMYK, but that's generally something that you'd be using if you're dealing with the print industry. Here, if we're dealing with screen-based stuff, it's RGB, and if we're going to be utilizing these inside of our Photoshop designs, you can just use this hexadecimal representation right here. So, for example, if I wanted to use this particular color scheme, and I'm not registered or signed in and I just want to come in here and copy this color you can right click and you can say copy that hexadecimal number uh, 
You can then jump to Photoshop on a Mac, that's Command Tab, nice shortcut. Or on a PC, you can do the same thing just by pressing um, Alt Tab. So as you can see here, I'll just switch over to Photoshop. And if I was in my type layout here, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, what I would suggest, um, if you're just copying this in this fashion, you could just come in here and you could paste in the information that you want to uh, have available to you right here. Um, however, there's one thing that I've found is that you might have some difficulties um, at any given opportunity to do that. So, you know, you can copy it here as you can see, but it might give you some grief if you're attempting to paste it command V or control V or paste it here. If that doesn't work then you might have to resort to just remembering the numbers and switching them over. So 374140 can turn into 374140 over here as well. And as you can see now we've got this darker color. A couple of things you can do like number one I can come over here and grab my paint bucket just drop it in bang you've got this great new color. It's not white. Um, it's something that you can use. What I would suggest you do is to add this new color to your swatch palette here. So as you can see I've got this new color as my foreground color because it's selected as such we do in fact are able to create a new color here. You could also double click it and when you double click it you can rename it and do all kinds of things to it. Um, one of the other things that you probably may or may not be aware of is that you can delete some of these swatches. For example, here are my swatches. I don't need all of these basic ones. So what can I do? Well, do I have to grab them one at a time? Well, that would be really time consuming. Can I shift click them as I can inside of Illustrator? Well, you could try, but it won't work. Um, one of the things you can do then is to say uh, replace swatches but that would be if you had other swatches that you could work with. Now there are plenty of swatches here in Photoshop for you to choose from which are great but I'm showing you what's happening on the color or cooler website and um, one of the things that I can do is to download and load one of those swatch sort of palettes inside of these. So you can replace swatches. Do you want to save the current swatches before replacing them? You could say don't save. And now you could go about picking those colors. Well, I don't have one downloaded just yet, so we'll have to wait until doing that. But what I would suggest you do is uh, try to delete colors if you can. And um, when you do delete those colors, uh, you'll have a much cleaner palette to work with. And I'll show you that in just a second as we take a look at the colors a little bit more closely in our next video.